This is The Lonely Office, your playbook for navigating the messy line between work and life. Our topics are sourced from real anonymous workplace conversations happening within Glassdoor communities. Oh, Matt, have you been hearing about this debate? How can you not hear about it <laughs> all over <laughs> your social networks? It's one of the biggest debates on the Glassdoor app and frankly, anywhere. Hmm. It's the open to work badge on LinkedIn. Uh. You know. If you're looking for work, should you use it? Is there a stigma? There was a recent article by Business Insider Chief Correspondent Aki Ito that dives into this, and we'll be bringing her on in just a few seconds. But yeah, here's the point. Okay. Matt, this is contentious. There are too many glass door posts to count about this, but looking <laughs> at it from the point of view of people who don't think you should use it, the sentiment is summed up perfectly by this post. It's mad cringe. Nobody wants to hire someone with a cringe, green, desperate badge, and that's facts. This is one side. I'm just the messenger. Okay. It's not this your is opinion. not my opinion. You're reading sentiments online. But clearly, this is like a 50-50 split. There's another right. side to this, which is really summed up by this post. The only people who are offended by it are the people who haven't had to or chosen to use it yet. Having right. it up publicly is beneficial because... It also shows that you're open to being contacted. Serendipity does occur. But that Matt, doesn't sound like serendipity. That sounds like an <laughs> algorithmic net. What they're saying there is like, listen, don't worry about the stigma. We're all human beings. Yeah. Here. We have yeah. jobs. We don't have jobs. This is just the journey. But right. there's a third layer here. One that was sparked by graphic designer Courtney Summer Myers on LinkedIn. Courtney started a trend actually by using a new hashtag, a new badge, hashtag desperate for work. Think, Listen, she's really clever. cut through the white noise here, right? She's yeah, like, clever. She, Courtney says in a post that went viral, introducing the hashtag desperate banner. There's been a lot of discourse about the hashtag open to work banner and what it means that it puts recruiters and hiring managers off because it makes you come across as desperate. Frankly, as a victim of redundancy, I am desperate and I don't think that's anything to be ashamed of. Being right. laid off doesn't reflect a lack of skills, talent, or work ethic. It's just bad luck. No one should be embarrassed that they need to pay their rent. Wear your hashtag open to work banner with pride because it just shows your strong, resilient, and optimistic qualities. Wow, that almost sounds like Christopher Walken. Wow, who knows? Qualities <laughs> any employer would be lucky to find what a great setup and look it's kind of interesting that we're even having this debate in this job market we're just on the back end of the conversation with guy Berger talking about the changing fortunes for job seekers in this economy right. versus one just a few years ago and so it's kind of sad that you even have to have this debate from a social stigma standpoint but i know there's other nuances about the open to work badge so what we wanted to do was actually bring in the journalist wrote the piece that sparked a lot of this conversation. So Aki here is joining us. Aki Ito, thanks for uh, jumping on The Lonely Office. Hi, thanks for having me. Aki, most importantly, before we get into this, was my Christopher Walken impression okay? <laughs> I approve. I approve. Thank you. Okay. On to business. So maybe just to level set with the audience, let's just describe the badge and how it works. I'm going to set you up here, Aki. The badge, as far as you know, I see it, is something you turn on on LinkedIn. It has an, kind of a graphic overlay that lives atop of your personal profile picture on LinkedIn. And it says hashtag open to work with some coloring and aesthetic to it. I know there's more to it and how it functions. Maybe just for our audience, speak a bit about that. Sure. You know, LinkedIn has long had this feature to allow you to signal to recruiters that you would potentially be open to a job. But this was always like a private signal to recruiters who pay extra on the LinkedIn platform. And then back in June of 2020, so this was really like the height of the pandemic, they made it into like a public feature too. So you can continue to privately signal to recruiters that you're open to work. But now you can also publicly signal to your entire network that you're open to work mm. as well. And so at least the idea for it is that it's helpful to tell recruiters that you're looking for work, but it could even be more helpful to tell your entire network of peers that you're looking for work. And that way, maybe if you have the banner on, somebody sees it and they think like, oh, that person would actually be great for this job that just opened up at my company. Is it also accurate to say there's a kind of a modality with the badge where 
you can have the badge, but then you can give it a private or public setting. And correct me if I'm wrong, the private oh, setting means it's on, but only the recruiters can see it. So it's kind of an indication of active job intent for the recruiters, whereas the public setting to, in the way you just described displays it to others so it can act as a referral basis where you might get referred a job because someone sees that, hey, yeah, you're actually actively looking. You're open for work. Yeah. The private version to recruiters just says open to work under your profile or something like that. It's pretty subtle, but you know, I think part of what <laughs> makes people get this like instant emotional reaction to the public banner is that it, it goes right on your face, you know, and it, it, sure follows, does. it follows you everywhere. So it's probably one of the most like public features of mm. LinkedIn that you see, you see it right away because it's right on people's faces. Right. So this kind of goes into the psychology of the platform. And I think just social media at large, because, you know, frankly, job seeking these days means you have a digital footprint and you have to have an active one actually to even have a shot at getting an interview. And that's just the nature of the beast. And so when it comes to social media, I think everybody can agree on the profile picture is something that's very personal, even in a context where it lives on a professional network, it's still personal. It reminds me a lot, Aaron, we talked about buddies of ours who would march down avenues in New York and Chicago during the great financial crisis with billboards, Hold it up. you know, holding up billboards saying open for work, printing out like human size resumes. <laughs> it's just kind of a, the digital version of that or the digital proxy of that. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I mean, from like a product standpoint, you can understand why LinkedIn made this decision because your profile picture shows up everywhere, you know, like when you comment on a post, when you write a post of your own, when you even like like somebody's post, your profile picture is always there. And so the idea is that you get to advertise to everybody at that moment who's looking at your your post, your profile picture, that you're open to work. But like you said, it has this like kind of extra psychological thing as well that, you know, you it's kind of like digitally tattooed on your face, which is um, a lot for a lot of people. Just deep diving on the, the psychology piece of it, because full admission, this is kind of uh, close to me as uh, someone who's built a, a professional network predicated on understanding the psychology of LinkedIn. Just to get into this, LinkedIn is typically known as a self-congratulatory platform. It's a platform built around self-promotion. I'm happy I mean, to the, announce. I'm happy to announce. I, <laughs> no, I mean, not even I'm happy. It's I'm humble to announce. I'm, I'm, oh, that's right. Humble that's brag, the key, humble. the humble brag. Right. And you know, I, I think for many of us, the quintessential use of LinkedIn is when uh, a friend of yours updates their profile to a new position and it's like, congratulate, you know, Aaron Calafato on his senior manager position <laughs> at X corporation. That's what the platform is. It's built around a psychology of promotion I found it interesting that this particular feature flips it, the psychology on its head, where a platform where you're supposed to be putting out laudatory elements about yourself, now they're asking you to put out you know, kind of the opposite. You know, this is an element of vulnerability. I don't have a job. Who wants to be applauded for not having a job or who wants to even uh, admit to not having a job on a platform that's all about promotion, self-promotion, and all about congratulatory remarks? Just curious to get your take on that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great point. Um, I think LinkedIn has been moving more towards that direction of vulnerability that's right. anyway, but that's it's right. still kind of in this like not totally vulnerable way, I guess. It's not real vulnerability. It's not actually authentic. Usually it's kind of like, you know, my wife got breast cancer and that's mm. why I'm a great marketing manager right. kind of post, right? right. right. Like, cringe. I don't even know how to react to that. Sad yeah, like, or performance yeah. art. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, TMI in kind of like the worst way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why it feels so uncomfortable to be using this banner and to even see it, I, I think, on the platform. In my story, I talk about how when I've seen the banner in the past, even though I know I shouldn't, you know, there's a part of me that winces a little bit and thinks like, mm. oh, this person must be having a really hard time. I don't think I'm necessarily judging them, but... I'm seeing this like private suffering of somebody that I'm not really supposed to see. And there's something really mm. uncomfortable about that too. 
you really hit on something there because when we talk about vulnerability, one of the things I've noticed even in this recording is we we kind of giggling a little bit, almost yeah, laughing out of discomfort again. The uncomfortable uh, laugh. The uncomfortable it's uncomfortable laugh. because of what you're saying, Aki. In the world of job seeking and this competitive industry, I just don't think it's the space for it. But I would also really quick want to ask, in your article, you highlighted that a lot of recruiters don't see that there is an issue here. Did I glean that correctly from your article? You know, a lot of the commentary online says recruiters see it as cringy. And right. out of those eight I spoke to, seven of them said they either felt neutrally about it or, if anything, it made them want to reach out to the candidate even more because this person's really serious about their job search. They're more likely to respond to my message. This person is probably more available for interviews and to you know, start the job without having to put in a notice, that kind of thing. But there was right. one recruiter out of the eight I spoke to who said that he sees it a little bit negatively, that perhaps this candidate isn't networking in the way that they should be. And instead, right. it's kind of resorting to the easy option of just turning on this button. I knew you spoke with a number of recruiters for this article. My per perception of being a recruiter, it's, it's very transactional. So you're, you're looking for a candidate to fit the right position so you can fill them and you know potentially earn a commission, right? And so in that sense, having any signal that tells you that this is a serious job candidate who's actively seeking and isn't going to ghost you later on is, is net net valuable. On the other side of things, what kind of flies in the face of that is actually some of the research you've mentioned in your article about the social stigma associated with active job seekers, namely job seekers who've been out of the marketplace for a while. For a year or longer. And I think you even mentioned an anecdote from the book, The Stigma Trap, that speaks about some of the, uh, the biases that come into play amongst people who are looking to refer their friends if they know that they're unemployed for greater than a year. I'm curious if you kind of quizzed some of the recruiters on that bias. Well, it's interesting because when we're talking about the public banner, we're, we're worried about two things, right? We're worried about whether recruiters will judge us for putting the banner on. And then we're also worried about what our peers will think That's if right. we put the banner on. And those are like two slightly different things. The recruiters, I, I think ov overwhelmingly, at least from my reporting, recruiters don't see it negatively. It, what we're actually worried about, I think, is what our peers will think. It's certainly scary. Some of the job seekers I spoke to who decided against using it, they said they don't want their old co-workers or something to be like, oh, I wonder what he did to deserve getting laid off. I wonder what terrible thing he did. He must have been a bad employee, that kind of thing. I think that's kind of the stigma that comes with unemployment, right? The really right. good people never get laid off. It's always the people who are kind of mediocre or worse who end up losing their jobs. Um, I think that ties in, Aaron, too, with a lot of our show research that we've discussed about referrals, the percentage of you know job placements that come from referrals and how they work. It seems like if you're a candidate or a job seeker who's looking to be placed through a referral or you believe you have a better shot being placed through a referral than by a recruiter, you might you might want to just think twice. I think that's a key thing. And when you talk about referrals and we talk about how important that personal connection is, I think what you're saying, Matt, is think twice about it. Doesn't mean don't do it, but just think twice about it. Because even going back full circle to kind of bring the conversation to an end, I cited that third layer with Courtney Summer Myers on LinkedIn, right. a graphic artist, right? Who, in fact, what's so interesting, Matt, you mentioned this during the, the pre-show research. She doesn't actually put open to work. She, no, she doesn't. Fact, iterates and puts desperate and creates almost like a brand, a new sort of movement she, and brand. So it's, it's not actually using it, right? No, I think that's what's so clever and brilliant about what Courtney did. She did not. She co-opted the system. She did the Sasha Baron Cohen kind of act here, satirizing the entire kind of banner and open to work process by creating her own banner that was called Desperate. And what's ironic about that is she worked outside the system to satirize it. And at the same time, you know, my understanding in the follow-up comments, she landed all these job opportunities or potential job opportunities. And so it's which, like the which debate. points us into the direction of referrals, essentially, right? Because referrals, where does that land you? It yeah. lands you that kind of personal, at least that warm lead. It's not yeah. like, I'm open to work, find me. Right. <laughs> exactly. And it also leads to the, the fact, because I know, I believe her post was a bit of an indictment of the online user base just ranting against this badge. And she was making a point that it's a tough job Stop market. Stop stigmatizing this. Stop yeah. stigmatizing. But 
the real irony is that she didn't even use it. Right. <laughs> she didn't use the badge at all, right? Like that's, 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 that's the real irony. It's a third layer. It's a third it's layer. A thir it's a third layer. One last question here for Aki for you, because you know your piece was also predicated on your own experiences using this badge. Can you maybe just to close out, give us your own perspective. Where did you land? Sure. Before I talk about my own experience, so it sounds like you guys are kind of anti-banner. Am I right <laughs> on that correctly? I'm actually not anti-banner. I would say I'm anti- it's I'm not anti other. Okay, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. Let's just cut through the white noise. Okay, so yeah. I'm not anti anyone else using the banner. People can do what they want to do. For me personally, right. if you're asking my choice, I'd never use it in, in my life. Maybe it's generational. I'm an elder millennial. And it sounds like an elder millennial is very serious seat at the table. Here's the thing, though. For me, coming up in the wake of 2008, like I did, with a essentially a desert for job opportunities, anything that would compromise the optics for me, I can't get into. There really isn't a space for vulnerability there because it's transactional. That's my opinion. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I find it falls somewhere similar. There's so much nuance in this. We let off with the discussion of colleagues of ours in the great financial crisis who carried billboards downtown. I mean, there's what, what are the optics of that, Aaron, right? I think the difference is, is ironically speaking, those colleagues of ours who did that the hiring managers who saw them in the streets were like, these guys have grit or these, you know, these women have grit. Right. Right. Whereas now I feel in this universe of social media branding and personal brand and, you know, the social cultural currency of online, putting a badge like that almost hurts your chances more than it helps because people don't read it as grit. They read mm -hmm. it as desperate. And that's what was so brilliant about what Courtney did. I mean, I think in my best version of myself, I would have done exactly <laughs> what Courtney did. Just co-opt the whole system, outsmart it and do something similar to what she did. I think using it, unfortunately speaking, like I said, for cultural reasons, they're not given the benefit of the doubt and it could hurt your referral chances amongst other colleagues in your industry. Aki, okay, I mean, to me, it's the percentages really quick. I want to hear your, you get the final word here. I, I mean, I get why it's uncomfortable. If, if I had to make the decision tomorrow, if I lost my job tomorrow, like, yeah, like I would feel really uncomfortable about it too. But I think after reporting out the story where I came down to was as long as you can stomach it i think job seekers should absolutely use the banner um it's okay. good it's, it gets you in front of recruiters and even though some people i do think will judge you like you guys talked about i think a lot of people especially today understand that like layoffs happen for all kinds of random reasons that have nothing to do with your employability the most important thing for job seekers who are looking for a job is to do everything you know it is such a tough job market out there especially right now you got to use every tool in the toolbox and if that means like swallowing your pride a little bit um you know i, I think i think you got to do it in a time in a universe where just getting noticed is incredibly difficult because we're all drowning yep in our images of ourselves and our posts and our voices online. I agree. I think, you know, at the end of the day, if it, get, if it gets you noticed, even in a bad way amongst others on that net, you got to do what you got to do. Aki Ito, awesome. thanks for joining us on The Lonely Office. For those of you who want to check out her article, it's called To Banner or Not To Banner. Thank you for joining us, Aki. Thanks so much, guys. Hey, you made it. Thanks for tuning in to The Lonely Office. If you like what you heard, follow us on all major podcast platforms so you don't miss an episode. And make sure and tap five stars and leave a review. I know everyone says it, but it actually helps others like you discover the show. Remember, the topics you hear us talk about on the show are sourced from Glassdoor communities, where professionals are having candid conversations about their careers anonymously with others in their industry. To be part of that conversation, download the Glassdoor app. And when you're in the app, make sure and join the Lonely Office Bowl. That's where we are. When you're there, you can suggest a topic idea or an episode idea, or you can make it more formal and email us at thelonelyoffice at glassdoor.com. We'll catch you next time.